Turkey, Carl Benson from Cooks of Crocus Hill. You've been a part of our show, the cooking show. 20 years. Forever. My mom reminded me I have a video, a VHS, that I left at her house of the first show we shot on Grand Avenue 20 years ago. <laughs> I was in high school at that point in time, which is good. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna talk like turkey brining. We're gonna brine the turkey, which so, I've never done, but I've always been intrigued about. Okay, so the, the, per the point of brining a turkey is, as you can see, it's still wet. Um, Look at that. The bird can be dry, right? So yeah. if you brine it, you're adding sugar and salt mm -hmm. and water. Make it and a little juicier. And you just juicier overnight. Yeah. So the, the combination of sugar, salt, and water will draw the moisture into the bird. Mm -hmm. So then when you roast it, the moisture helps to steam it from the inside as it comes to temperature, but it also helps to keep it moist. So the recipe that I, that I brought, um, or that I gave to you guys, is substituting some of the water for apple cider. Really? A Why? couple of jugs. Because it's sweet, it's apple-y, it's kind of thanksgiving -y, yeah. and it, it, the drippings in the pan mm -hmm. are really interesting. There's a little a higher sugar content to them, so you have to be careful. But they add a nice little apple sweetness, little sweetness to, the, to, to the gravy that you're using. That's good. So uh, a couple of points here when you're roasting the bird. Yeah, you don't just drop it in the grind, right, Brian? No, you that's do. A, you put it right inside? Right it? in the brine. Just drop it in there. Just drop it in there. Okay. Um, if your turkey is a butterball turkey or anything self-basting, mm -hmm. you don't want to brine it because okay. they already, they've already moisturized the bird. So okay. like an organic or a free range or something that has been out in the pasture, mm -hmm. then those are tougher birds. So that's the bird you use. So when you brine, mm -hmm. you go the night before. So you start when you're making dinner or when you get home. And if you figure you're gonna cook midday, yeah. so you take it out in the morning, you let it rest for couple of hours in the refrigerator uh -huh. just to start to dry and then before you want to roast the bird you leave it 45 minutes on the counter to okay. come to room temperature okay so you rinse it off with all the brine yeah, how do and, we, and we sell and what do you have here so this is just a mix of salt and sugar and okay. spices so you just pour it over the top of it or pour it into the into, into the brine okay. mixture do you do anything to the skin or underneath the skin before you sure put it in? not before you roast it not before no in the oh, brine right you leave before, it before yes, you gotcha. roast it you know you take your fingers and you stick it underneath the I'll under the skin stuff in there and then you can pack it with butter or with uh, orange, orange, orange peels or yeah. apples. Put it in here and then you, you plan on, say 16 minutes a pound okay. in the oven. And then you start, and so if you're gonna, if you do the math and you say, I need to roast her for two hours. So think about as you back from dinner time. Mm -hmm. Dinner time's four o'clock. Yeah. So you, two hours behind, you want, you want to actually add 45 minutes for the bird to rest after it comes out of the oven. So it keeps cooking. So it keeps cooking, yeah. it gets to temperature, plus it gives you 45 minutes to get ready. And make other So you're like, dishes. okay, bird's out of the oven. Now you're good. And now you can, you can make the potatoes, you can pop a few things back in the oven that you want to reheat mm -hmm. so that everything is warm at dinner time. Can you do... Can you cook it any way after you run? I mean, can anyway. you deep fry it? You smoke. You smoked this deep one. Didn't you? I smoked it. So yesterday I, I smoked this. Why? It's yeah. all kind of really brown. It's not. Well, then I accidentally burned it a little. <laughs> Which <laughs> just, happens. Just happens because I, I, I turned the oven up a little too high. Um, so I smoked it yesterday and then finished it in the oven. Yeah. So depending on the level of smoke that you want, you can smoke it. So I put it on the grill. It's brining is awesome for grilling. Really? Because that environment is super dry. Yeah. And the, because so of the, the, the coals or the flame. But don't deep sucks fry the moisture you said? out. You, you kind deep of fry, I, yeah, because then you're, you're adding moisture to the bird. And when you put a wet bird in the hot oil, I know we all watch the videos on yeah. YouTube of yeah. the guy who burns down it his garage. Up. Yes, yeah. of course. Yep. So the more moisture that's in the bird, the more dangerous it is for dropping it into hot okay. oil. Well, what else do we do to this one? This, nothing. You just take nothing. it like that's this, it. pop it We're in done. the oven. You're good. Dinner's and people ready. will say, people, will ask us, well, I really want to, my grandmother always put the stuffing inside the bird. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we're all like, oh, that's so dramatic. Grandma used to stuff the bird. <laughs> the challenge with stuffing the bird is you now take a room temperature bird uh -huh. and you put stuffing that has um, eggs in it. It has a lot, you know, some dairy, depending on your recipe. Yeah, yeah. And you pack that cavity. So the challenge now is you want to get 165 degrees all the way all through the, way the bird. To all the way inside. into the center yeah. of the cavity. And then, you know, if you really want the bird stuffed yeah. before, you know, you want the Norman Rockwell moment where, yeah, yeah. you know, you cut it open, you're carving <laughs> it, and there's all the stuffing in there. Cook the stuffing in a pan. Yeah. Cook all the egg that's in the stuffing. Then take scoops of stuffing and stuff it into the cavity before you carve the it. Menu. And we have our finished product and We right have here. finished product here. So then carving the bird, everybody wants to carve it on the, yep. on the bird, right? Yes. So I kind of started it a bit. And you get, it's nice, and you get really nice pieces. And then you get 
people coming to they the all, table. They everybody wants to taste it. Yeah. Trying to see barley. Too. I, know. I know. Yeah, she's coming. That's for sure. Really good tips, Carl. I mean, oh, really good, good thoughts. Good, good. Yeah. Keep, people are oh, like, okay, okay, okay. Yep. Yeah. No, no. So, I mean, or really you good carve stuff. the side off. Yeah, yeah. And then you slice the side so that everybody gets, you can cut it against yeah. the grain. There you go. So then everybody gets a really nice warm piece. Oh, that looks and so good. And you do this right at the bitter end. Okay. So you don't, you know, you don't slice the bird before you take the potatoes out of the oven before you take that wonderful it's all about Brussels timing. Yeah. Stuff. timing. All about timing. And, timing. And Cooks of Crocus Hill has locations in Minneapolis' is North Loop, St. Paul's Grand Avenue, and Main Street in Stillwater. We have the brine recipe. And here at Care 11. And right here right at Care 11. This morning. Yes. We have the recipe. You want 